Hello everyone! Today I am making art from the indigenous Americas. This area of art history is one of my favorites to study, so I'm really excited to discuss these pieces. On the official master list, this section is listed as content area number 5 if you're looking for a reference. Here we will be covering a time period of about 2,000 years for two continents with 13 artworks. So this is not inclusive of every culture and art period in the Americas. If these subjects interest you or if you're unfamiliar with indigenous art, I encourage you to do more research in your free time. This ranking is based on my personal opinions, so don't be surprised if we have different feelings about some or all of the pieces. I don't dislike any of these pieces, but I do have preferences. But before I start my ranking, please make sure to subscribe to get notified when I upload videos. Okay, let's go. Number 14, The Great Serpent Mound. Even if you haven't taken an art history course, you've probably seen a picture of this in your textbook. The Great Serpent Mound is what the name implies, a large mound in the grounds of Ohio shaped like a snake. It curves around like a swirly straw and can be visible from high in the sky. It's a cool piece, but I find it to be the least impactful out of this selection. Number 13, the Silver Maze Cobs. The Silver Maze Cobs were once part of a large silver and gold garden full of recreations of other local vegetation. Each one was handmade and meticulously crafted to be as realistic as possible. Not only is the scale of this impressive, but the fact that it's realistically designed is unique to the Incans. Other societies from South America usually preferred more abstract or geometric styles. This uniqueness is in execution is why I prefer it to the Great Serpent Mound. Number 12, Chavin de Huntar. Chavin de Huntar hosts a large religious complex composed of an older and a newer temple. These stone buildings stand on the surface, with hidden entrances to tunnels running underneath. At the intersection of one of these tunnels is what's nicknamed the Great Spear. This stone structure hosts a carving of a supernatural figure with various patterns. It's very, very intricate and intriguing, but doesn't quite pique my interest like some of these other artworks. Nevertheless, it's still amazing and cool. Number 11, the black on black ceramic vessel. The black on black ceramic vessel was created in the early 1900s by Maria Martinez. She began to make art when she was a child and many who knew her knew about her talents. Later in her life, she decided to make art with the purpose of being sold to those outside of her Native American community. Doing this meant making objects that were intended to not just be looked at instead of also being used Utilitarian. Her ceramic pieces like the black and black vessel have a matte background with a glossy design on top, all in black of course. Her art marks a change in artistic intent which was seen on a wider scale with the likes of other artists changing their art from being u more utilitarian to more aesthetic. This makes it very interesting. Number 10. All Teokapu Tunic this is a handmade Incan textile. Andean peoples have a long history of weaving beautifully intricate and richly colored fabrics like these. Materials for this process were all gathered from scratch, from the alpaca wool to the strikingly red dye. After the coloring process was completed, the wools or cottons would be woven together in a grid-like structure. Just making one full textile required immense time and lots of labor, which definitely paid off in the end. I love the complexity of their designs accompanied by the simple yet aesthetically pleasing color schemes. Number 9. The Bandoy Layer Bag Another signifier of a change in the way of life for Native Americans in the 19th and 20th centuries, the Bandoy Layer Bags were largely influenced by European style bags, but with their own twist. These pieces of art were embroidered with hundreds of small beads, which were sometimes used as monetary tools for trade in different Native American societies. The wide range of colors and geometric patterns, these bags are like no other usually worn as more of a decoration than for practical purposes the bandolier bags were reserved for special events i love how they took the typical european bag a time when it have been extravagantly decorated and turned it into something that was intricate and ceremonial number eight 
The city of Cusco. The city of Cusco is located in Mexico and has an extensive history spanning for thousands of years. Originating under Incan rule, the city was divided into four sections. You can think of these as being similar to neighborhoods, each with their own living spaces and shops. Cusco exemplified the power that the Incans had and still shares their history hundreds of years later. There are literally countless artworks depicting the city of Cusco from ancient times to today. This legendary city boasts a long history of art that I could study for days. Although it's not my favorite city on this list, I would still love to visit Cusco someday. Number 7. Yachtitlan Lentil 25 Structure 23 I know I just butchered the name, but I'm trying my best. This relief is a part of a Maya religious structure which had a 150 year break in construction preceding the creation of Lentil 25. One of hundreds of reliefs in this complex, this specific structure shines among them for multiple reasons. One is that rather than depicting the ruler, Shield Jaguar II features Lady Shook. Lady Shook, I'm sorry, I'm not saying this correctly, I'm trying my best, more powerful than your average Maya citizen, as she was Shield Jaguar II's favorite spouse. With such a relationship between her and the Maya ruler, she undoubtedly held massive influence in Maya society, which is shown through this lentil series. She is engaging in a religious bloodletting ceremony, something that the elites did often. The extreme detail in these carvings is breathtaking and makes the narrative more engaging for the viewer which is one of the reasons why I like it so much. I also really like it because it focuses on a woman, which isn't as common in ancient art. Number six, the transformation mask. Now, you don't see something like this every day. This mask is called the transformation mask because when worn, it transforms the performer into another being and the mask itself can change between two different personas. Transformation masks were worn in ceremonial events by performers. Thus, they were created with aesthetic and utilitarian goals in mind. Each mask is full of personality, created by the lively carving, plentiful patterns, and the colorful painting of the anthropomorphic subjects. The combination creates a charismatic aura around each mask, which is part of the reason why I like them so much. I can't think of anything else like these masks. They're truly one of a kind. Number 5. The Painted Elk Hide Attributed to Kadzi Cody, this is what the name says, a painted elk hide. Created in the early 20th century, this unique painting is newer than many of the pieces on this list. It was designed to be sold to visitors and tourists, much like the black-on-black -black ceramic vessel. You can see this intent in the depiction of people hunting buffalo on horseback while using bow and arrows. Imagery like this was popular among visitors during the time, and still is. In the center, there is a depiction of a traditional dance called the sun dance. The sharp angles and playful colors are a stark contrast to the light beige hide, which places emphasis on the center scene. I love this aspect of the artwork as it creates a lively atmosphere. Additionally, the spiral layout of the position draws you into the center, allowing for the viewer to become immersed in the painting, which is another aspect I enjoy. Number 4, Templo Mayor. This religious complex has two main temples, each one dedicated to a separate deity. Located in the once Aztec ruled city of Tenochtitlan, Templo Mayor was 90 feet tall, standing out among the rest of the building. Home in ruins, it was once brightly decorated, home to many reliefs and other religious artworks. Some of the most well known among these was the Coyalxuqui Stone. I'm sorry for my pronunciation. This mammoth of a carving of the deity who was thrown off of a mountain would have been seen at the base of the temple. That mythology was in also incorporated in the practice of taking their war prisoners and throwing them down these very steps. By building such a grand temple for extravagant showcases of power, which they tied to the Aztec religion, making the, the message of Aztec importance even more impactful. Despite the Spanish efforts to destroy this physical mark of Aztec success, its lasting legacy can never be forgotten. Number 3. Feathered Headdress The feathered headdress is an absolutely stunning artwork. Made out of feathers from a local species of bird, this headdress oozes luxury from every fiber of its being. Only one to three of those elongated feathers can be found on one bird, 
which made them extremely valuable, especially considering their rich color. Thus, having so many of such a sought after item in one object made it extraordinary. Additionally, the wingspan of the feathered headdress would be intimidating to the commoners who saw their leader wearing it. This combination would have exemplified the wearer's wealth power and prestige. I cannot stop looking at this headdress since the astounding use of color is one of the best I've ever seen. Number 2. Machu Picchu Machu Picchu is one of the most iconic architectural artworks of all time and for a good reason. Not only is the remote location of this intricately built stone city intriguing, but the fact that the stone was carved to fit perfectly with those around it in such a way that will relieve stress on the building during an earthquake or the like is also very impressive. Additionally, when looking at Machu Picchu from above, the border of the city forms the shape of a puma. Puma was a religiously and culturally significant animal as shown by the city's layout. Machu Picchu is simply inspiring and one of the most pleasing artworks to look at. Number 1. The Mesa Verde Cliff Dwellings This is one of my favorite architectural pieces of all time. The Mesa Verde Cliff Dwellings appeared on the cliff face about a thousand years ago thanks to the Puebloans. Their smooth surfaces starkly contrast the jagged cliffs which engulf them, hiding them from unwanted visitors. If you wanted to enter Mesa Verde, you would have to be extremely comfortable with climbing ladders as none of the houses or other structures had front doors. It's location under the overhang of the rocky landscape has protected these structures from the elements so well that over a hundred of the original rooms are still intact. The thoughtfulness in the architecture of the Mesa Verde cliff dwellings is an element that shines brightly among the sea of art history making it one of my favorite artworks. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe for more. Thank you.